community's migration towards ISO 20022 is kicking off in November this year and will last to at least until the end of 2025. So the question is, how can fast adopters get the most out of the migration for their customers? And how do central capabilities help getting the value to the full community? Big questions, and to help us answer them, we are joined by Michael Knorr. Michael is Head of Payments and Liquidity Management at Wells Fargo and also co-chair of the Payments Market Practice Group. And Brees Germans, who's ISO 2022 Migration Programme Lead at SWIFT. Very Welcome good day to, you. to both of you. Thanks for joining us here for our final roundup, really, of Cybos 2022. Brees, if I can start with you first, sir. Uh, we've been hearing a lot about cross-border payments moving to ISO 2022 this week. Uh, how are the community and SWIFT preparing themselves for it? Yep. Um, maybe I'll first take a, a step back and saying that um, yeah, the community has been preparing for this, this um, migration um, since a few years now. Eh? The, the, the CPPR Plus working group has been looking at well, the full library of, of about 700 ISO messages that exist to uh, trickle them down into the, 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 the suitable size uh, and, and, and message types that we have. Um, and then, um, at the same time, Swift has been upgrading their uh, the, the services, the core uh, messaging services interface, etc. So, um, secondly, the, the the banks are investing a lot in getting ready also for for uh, for ISO in, in November. Um, some banks are, are even uh, that far that they are already wanting to go live ahead of the, the global rollout, and, and um, I, some banks are already doing so. Um, so it's really, really great to see. And then, of course, it's a migration. So between this year, November and 2025, banks can still adopt um, at their own pace. Um, so for that, Swift has um, created uh, a cloud-based translation service so that banks can still uh, process the legacy format as, as, as they do today. Mm. And as Michael, in the introduction, I referenced there your role as co-chair of the Payment Market Practices Group, which means that you're a key stakeholder to enable the global market of high-value payments. So given that... How do you see the state of readiness? Yeah, thanks. Uh, and, and this could be also a true survivalist story to keep with your theme <laughs> that you mentioned earlier. And the industry has been preparing for it for a number of years already. This is not something that happens overnight. And uh, the PMPG, as well as many experts in the industry, have been working on this for now a number of years to get the industry overall, as well as their own institutions, ready right, for, PMP, uh, for ISO 2022 this year. But ISO 2022 is not just what we do this year in CB, um, with the CBPR Plus implementation, but also what many payment systems need to do over the next uh, few years to upgrade their own messaging to ISO uh, 2022. And we'll see some of this this year, next year. In the US, we're a little bit sort of slower a little bit. <laughs> we're uh, migrating in uh, 23 and then Fedwire in 25 and 23 just doing, uh, doing chips. So it is sort of a long, uh, long haul uh, arrangement uh, and effort that uh, the overall industry right, needs to put in. But I think we're doing pretty well, right, with the level of support we've gotten from Swift and definitely in the testing space that we have seen, there's, I think the readiness is, is relatively, uh, I think, very, we're pretty well prepared, right, from an industry perspective to, to go live this year. Please, what would you say are the main challenges ahead uh, during the coexistence between NOV22 and, and NOV25? Yeah, um, so between now and then, um, banks are moving at their own pace. So some banks are already going fully natively ISO as from the start, while others are still ramping up their, their capabilities. So the key challenge, in, in my opinion, would be the, the interoperability. So the risk of losing um, critical data uh, along the chain because these banks in, in one payment transaction could have different capabilities. Um, so uh, to, to help uh, the community with that, we have uh, at Swift created a transaction manager. And one of its first capabilities and the main ones we have uh, for, for these coming years will be the, the preservation of uh, rich data throughout the full chain so that banks that, um, that do invest already now uh, into ISO uh, and, and the capabilities, um, that they can I get the benefits, and I think Michael will talk a bit uh, about uh, that, um, that they can already start realizing those um, as soon as, 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 uh, yeah, as, as the first transaction they, they initiate. And you're right, Michael can talk about yeah. it, because what I want to look at is this, this, this rich and structured data. If you're a fast adopter, how can you get the best out of it so that it enhances what you do, the, off the services that you offer? Yeah, and good that you raise it, right? Because ISO 22 is all, ISO 22 is all about data, uh, data quality, right? 
having a well-defined standard. And that's what you need to internalize. And uh, some of the key benefits that early adopters, and hopefully, right, by 2025, everybody gets out of it, <coughs> is really improved straight through processing in, in, in sort of for, for regular, just to make sure the messages conform or you send them one to the next party. But maybe most of all, for to automate some of the more exceptions that we're handling today. And by that, I mean in, for example, our... Uh, financial crimes uh, compliance activity, mm -hmm. be it in sanction screening. And here ISO 2022 will provide a lot more well-defined data, right, for name and address and account type that will hopefully allow the industry to uh, automate these processes a, more, a lot more and hence reduce false positives, reduce the haystack a bit, right, to find, so to speak, the needles mm -hmm. that, are, that are in there. And transaction manager we really help, right, the early adopters to get sort of these benefits out there, even if some communities, right, do not uh, uh, opt sort of uh, into early adoption yet, right? But we do believe as, a, as an industry that uh, what Swift has done with transaction managers is fantastic, and we will help, right, the overall adoption, getting benefit out of, uh, out of this. Michael, if I can stay with you for a second, after the community completed the adoption, what are the next business areas where using rich and structured data uh, can benefit? Yeah, key focus right now is really on payments, getting, making sure we can send payments, receive payments. But, you know, with data, the reporting is key. So the next thing is really to, uh, to work on the uh, statements and reporting to ensure that the rich data that's available through the payment messages can actually be delivered to end customers so that can aid their reconciliation. Uh, ISO 2022 payment message can include structured remittance data, for example. That's very important, right, to provide to end, uh, end users. And then for us banks, the next big thing will be to automate further exceptions processing, which we refer to as exceptions investigations. A lot of this stuff is happening today via free format messages. And the idea is, can we structure that further, make it more machine readable, that even the exceptions, right, can be in the future run more automated. And again, there will be some new exciting opportunities, I hope, how we can help smaller banks, right, through mutualized infrastructure to participate in that and get similar benefits. OK, well, look, there's going to be more to tell next year because, of course, that's when it all kicks in, so we'll be able to see those first fruits. But, gentlemen, we have to leave it there as ever. Time has gone against us, but Michael Knorr, Head of Payments and Liquidity Management at Wells Fargo, haven't finished yet. Co-chair of the Payments Market Practice Group and Bruce Germans, ISO 2022 Migration Program Lead at SWIFT. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here on Cybos TV and hopefully we'll see you in Toronto next year. Right. Thank you. Thanks for having me.